here we are and it's time to paint. So he's basically ready to go. The only thing that I've done, since you saw him last, is I gave a, just a quick coat of white paint there to the inside. Not so much trying to make it look good because that's not gonna be visible at all with this planter. But I mean, the bucket was orange and I didn't want it to be like in your face orange about it. So we just covered it up a little bit and I think it looks a little better. But now we're going to work on painting the rest of this guy. I'm going to be using latex acrylic paints mixed with water. Three parts water, one part paint. That's kind of like your base recipe. And then you can vary it based on uh, the type of sprayer that you're using. Uh, some sprayers don't like to pump a liquid that thick and you need to water it down further to use that sprayer. Also, the amount of water that you add to your paint color will affect how um, translucent or opaque that coloration is. Like if you have a lot of water, a red dot will touch there, but then the red kind of just disperses and it's a little bit translucent. The more paint that you have, the stronger the paint concentration, the more opaque that dot of color is going to be. And it, it really just depends on what you're trying to accomplish here. There's a lot that you could do with these paint jobs here. And I'm going to, going to be using a mixture of uh, techniques. I'm going to be using an airbrush technique, technique along with spray bottles and a couple of different spray bottles actually for different misting patterns. And this is all going to be based around that um, three parts water, one part acrylic latex paint. Uh, when I apply these, I want to apply them in layers. I don't want to just do it all at once because the, there will be too much color bleed. I kind of want to create differentiation between the layers of color and the way that you accomplish that is apply one, let it sit and dry, then apply the next layer. So I'm going to be doing a couple of different things here, but the first thing that I want to do is add some base layer color. And the base layer color that I'm going to be using is gray. He's gray already stands to reason that I'm going to do gray. You can tell probably from some of the other colored concrete in the background here, you can do other stuff too, and I could do this any color at all. The further I deviate from his base color, the more likely he will experience damage and premature wear over time. The If I wanted a red statue, I should use a red base concrete and then build from there. That way if there's scuffs or scrapes or anything like that, it's red on red, so you don't really notice it right away. If I paint this red and then like take some sandpaper and wipe it, you're gonna see that gray underneath there and it looks terrible. So that's why I tend to go gray on gray kind of thing. Now, you might think like, oh, this looks like stone already, right? Like it really doesn't. Once you paint it to look more like stone, you'll really see what I mean. It looks a lot more convincing. I'm going to start with this gray here. It's Nothing fancy at all, and I'm not going to cover the whole thing. What I'm attempting to do is add, like, deviations of color or color striations. Basically, I want this base layer to not be just so uniformly gray. Let's get a couple of different gray colors going on here, and that will help uh, in terms of adding some depth of character to the colors when we get to the future layers. So we're going to start with a base layer applied with an airbrush, about 40 PSI through that airbrush line. And again, I'm not trying to paint the whole thing, just, you know, lighter in some areas, darker in others, and then I'm going to let that all dry before I proceed to the next layer.
whoops, looks like I lost you there on the, the last take. Uh, I don't think you saw this because I think my battery died there at some point. So I just wanted to uh, bring you up to speed before I go any further here. As you can see, it's just a very, very light coating of the red. Really hardly anything at all. Just something that's going to add to the finished look, you know. None of this looks like it's making that big of a difference, like especially the gray layer, you hardly see anything at all. That's okay, because as I add more layers, you're going to be able to see the differentiation between the layers, most especially when I add the sealer layer. When you add the sealer layer, all of a sudden, all these different layers that we've added kind of pop relative to each other, and so it it makes a, a lot of character in the paint job. But anyway, I just wanted to stop and bring you up to speed because I see that the battery died. And I want you to see this whole process. That's why this video is so long, because I don't want to skip anything. I want you to see the whole thing from beginning to end. And as you can see here, just very, very lightly with that red airbrush here to give me some undertone of, you know, iron oxide leaching out from this rock that we're making. Can't really do anything else yet. I, this is still fresh. Um, so I just got to give that five, ten minutes for this to dry. And then we can go ahead and add our next layer on here. Let's make some paint together here. I need some black next. And I'm all out, so I'm going to make a new spray bottle here. Of all the different colors that we use, black is the most important one. So if you have one spray bottle which is better than the other, then this is the one. You use uh, black. And often I'll make these tiny little guys for these colored ones. Because I'll go a long time not needing this particular color. So I don't want to have a lot of it on hand. The black I use on every single color that I do. Black is always the last layer. Sometimes it's an intermediary layer, which is what I'm doing right now, but it's always the last layer. So you're always going to be going through a lot of the black color. That's why I buy larger amounts of it. It's a little bit of a pain to work with. I usually make a pretty good mess. I imagine this time should be no different. And so you can see we've got, I don't know, about yay much there, and we want three times as much water as paint. It's about there. Give or take. Now just give it a good shake. Be aware. Some spray bottles are great, don't leak at all. Some leak like crazy, so when, be careful when you start to go because it can leak out of here or it can leak out of here. And obviously with black paint, I mean, first of all, you could ruin the piece that you're working on, that would suck. But also you could just make a gigantic mess. Would also suck. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. So the first thing I need to do here, because I'm not actually using this spray bottle yet, I'm going to use the airbrush. Oops, making a mess. Making a huge mess. <laughs> okay. Alright, let's mask up and get started here. So what I am trying to do here is not paint it black now. I want to make this area kind of dark. I'll leave this totally light. Dark up here. I just want some variation in this color.
And now we need to let it dry again. All right, we are back. He is now dried in between the layers here, so we can proceed. So what we started with was a couple of airbrush layers. Now we're gonna change it up to sprayers. Now, the world of sprayers is pretty big. There's a lot of different ones you could get. This is like the lowest common denominator. This is the cheapest thing going for essentially disposable sprayers. Paint doesn't do super well with sprayers. Eventually you're gonna gum up the nozzle. There's no way to clean it. It's garbage at that point. And that's true for the cheapest ones all the way up to the like the most expensive pressurized garden sprayer variety, they do the same thing as well. So I tend to kind of use the lower end ones knowing that I'll get a little bit of use out of it and that's what I get. Um, you can try to buy the better quality ones, take better care of them. You can buy better quality spray bottles uh, and then better than that as well. Uh, and of course, better quality means it's gonna last a little bit longer and then of course try to take care of it. And what that means is when you're finished, you wanna run water through the nozzle. Uh, and the more you do that, the better it's going to be the next time you go to use it. If there's paint left in the nozzle, it's going to dry in there, gum up the works, it's not going to work anymore. So anyway, this nozzle here is going to give me a pretty fine mist spray. It's going to be hard for you to see, but it's about as fine as you're going to get. And that's kind of what I'm going for here. And I don't want to spray it right on there. Kind of with this layer, I want to, uh, at least a good portion of it, I want the mist to kind of just settle in place. Um, so it does, I mean, huge mess, lots of overspray, such as the nature of this kind of painting work. So definitely have, you know, your area set up to be able to handle all that. But uh, I'm, what I'm going for here is a couple of different colors uh, that I'm going to do like a light spritzing layer around with, I'm going to be like kind of a tan taupe light brown color. And this is like an off-white cream color. Go ahead and get started here. I don't need the spray or the vent ventilator mask for this because it doesn't atomize in the same way as the other one. But by all means, if you want to wear one, again, you don't see too much individually, but when I apply the, the sealer, that's when you'll really notice these different layers here. And I definitely think dark in one area, not at all in another, light over here. As random as you can make it really, I think serves this purpose well. looking good let it dry before you continue don't think it's quite dry yet but I want to add a little bit more so I'm going to do so right now right, let's go like that Let it dry. Almost dry. We're almost there. Well, we're back, ready to keep going here. And uh, we're gonna be doing a, this is slightly off white.
something to be careful of when you're doing a misting layer is that the the surfaces that are vertical are going to not absorb as much paint as the horizontal surfaces like the shoulder area here if i were to just like spray a bunch of this there'd be a little here but this would basically be covered so if you're going to do a lot of it you know like let's say i was going to do a lot i'd probably just do something like that right and that way i can and i want a little on there but not too much Don't want to overdo it with the white layer, but it does look good. Especially when you compare it to the final layer, which will be black. And that will be black from this spray bottle here, which is going to give us a, an entirely different quality of misting pattern. Tiny bit heavy there. That was a really light layer, so it's not going to take long for it to dry, but I want to give it some dry time because I definitely don't want these white speckles to get lost. I want them to stand out individually. And again, when you see the, the finished layer here, when I apply the sealer to it, it, you will be able to see more differentiation between the colors here. Right now it kind of gets lost and also on camera it doesn't really do it any favors. It's very hard to get this than any sort of uh, digital picture uh, or video uh, to where it does it any justice. It looks really good in person, believe me. Um, but I will try to uh, bring the lights in a little closer. I'm going to get another camera over here and see if I can't get another pass with this uh, new color layer on here and uh if it works then hopefully you should see the video cut away and see some up close color here oh good i like it <laughs> i was worried that the white dots would just uh, blend in but they haven't they stand out here and that's great so now we're going to move on to the challenging layer this is the magic. This is the, the secret sauce right here. So you want to tune your black sprayer. That's what the extra bucket's usually for. So I'm going to kind of spray it here and just fine tune it if I can. Which is usually almost all the way closed. not gonna work okay I've used just about every sprayer on the market and here let me I think I can even show you you can kind of see how that's all like big and floppy and whatever that's no good it needs to be a finer mist than that I find these are usually pretty good um, I decided to try these because it was uh, I got some on sale and they're pretty expensive so I thought maybe they'd be good they're not good Okay, I found a spray bottle that I have some measure of confidence is going to do the job. Moment of truth, let's get what I'm looking for here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, don't you know. That's pretty much it. Can you see? Probably. Can you see that? I feel like you might be able to see it. That's kind of what I'm going for. All right, so let me talk you through what I'm gonna do here. So I have my sprayer fine-tuned, as fine-tuned as it's going to get. I'm going to spray, again, same thing, kind of want it to just fall into place as opposed to just spraying it right on there. And because this is the black layer, 
when you spray, you're going to get a whole bunch of little stuff that's ideal. If you get a great big glob or it starts running down in some spot, you have decimal zero 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 one second to get in there. And if you are fast enough, you can pull 90% of that color out. If you count one Mississippi and then try to, it's it's there. It's already stained the concrete. So that's kind of the one tip that I have as we go here. I'm going to try to mist it. I want something like, you know, not even, but like an even distribution of little black dots, no long running things and no big globby spots. So let's see how well I do here. Okay, not the best sprayer either, but that's pretty. All right, here we go. Not bad. Oh, not bad. I don't mind those bigger ones. It doesn't hurt my feelings. I'm okay with all of that, actually. Right there. Right there. See how I got that? Hopefully you could see that. It's looking great here. Really, really good. All right, so this is the hard part. If there's gonna be a spot that you don't want a big black dot of this stuff, it's gonna be uh, right around here. So this is about the time it normally happens. Do it. A little bit right here, I think, yeah? Oh, I don't mind that at all. I'm happy with that. I think that looks fantastic. Again, I don't know how well it comes through uh, on the camera there. I mean, we probably, let me go get something that's just regular gray concrete here just so we can do a quick visual comparison. So that's just plain gray concrete there. As you can see, hopefully, there's a pretty, pretty big difference. And we haven't added the sealer layer yet. As I mentioned all along here, when we add the sealer layer, that's when we're going to get the best finish. I think that's pretty much it. I think I'm happy with that. Let's make sure the top's got a couple of sprinkles of that black on there. It does. I'm happy with that. I think I'm done here. I like it. I hope you like it too. I'm going to let this set overnight. I really want this to be fully dried before I try to apply the sealer layer. If there was any moisture trapped in here from the paint that I've added, or just from the concrete not being cured yet, you're going to get like a blushing or a, the sealer will, it'll have like a whitish hue to it. That's not ideal. You don't want to be able to see the sealer itself. Uh, but that's why we're going to wait about 24 hours before we seal this. And when you seal it, you should be able to see a pretty big difference in the uh, the different colors, like the different colors pop one on the other and it makes it look even more realistic.